Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I'm really excited to share four DIY projects with you. Do you ever just come across those items? You're not even sure if there's anything you can do with them. So I wanna share some fun, interesting decorative finishes that you could do to maybe upcycle and recreate and restyle some old random pieces you have, plus some home decor. So let's head over to project one. So I wanted to upcycle a few old scratch plates I have and I'm going to be using some embroidery floss as well as some jute rope. And the jute rope is actually about five millimeters in thickness. When it's cut, it actually wants to unravel so I'm just going to hot glue it nice and tight before I apply it to the plate. The key I want to do here is make it as tight as possible even from the very beginning. I'm just going to center and coil the jute rope right from the center of the plate. Now, just a tiny, tiny amount of hot glue, I can start to circle around as much or as little of the color floss that I want. All I wanna do is wrap around the color embroidery floss all the way around. And you can make them anywhere from say, an inch to two to three inches. And that's what's gonna be the unique design about this project. So just adding that little tiny bit of hot glue at the beginning and at the end of your colored embroidery, it just adds for a really good adhesion. Now I'm just gonna keep coiling around. I don't have a specific design. I'm just gonna keep adding colors in random and the length and the amount of embroidery flosses can completely vary. Because I wanna be able to hang this up onto a vertical, it's really important that all of the jute rope is completely hot glued, coiled around onto the plate. And you're gonna need a very little amount as you're going around as you don't want the hot glue to seep in between the coils. What's really fun about this project is you can make it as colorful as you want or you can stick with some neutral tones or even just a black and white embroidery floss. Really important to tightly firm your jute rope nice and secure and tightly back to back. This way you don't have any gaps and none of the glue will show through. Once I got to the outer perimeter of the plate, I wanna make sure that it's gonna go all the way around that rim, and then it's actually going to extend all the way into the back. So if I hang this on the wall, it won't even look like a plate. It'll look like a wall basket slash uh, wall art accent piece. If you don't have embroidery floss, you can always just use a really thin yarn in different colors as well. Now, I'm going to use a small little clamp for a wall hanging and the E6000 glue. So I'm gonna put it on the actual metal bracket and I'm also gonna put a little bit of glue on top of that just for extra adhesion. Because I had two scratched plates, I'm going to go and give you some other inspiration and other supplies that you may already have at home. So I'm going to be using this cording and it's just in that beige material. It's about three millimeters and whatever you have at home, you can use different types of ropes, different types of jutes, and I'm also going to be using a little seagrass in this one. Each time I cut it, I want to cut it on an angle and when I start a new material or a different type of cording, I want to make sure it starts on an angle so that way it's cohesive as I keep going around in the coiling. 
I find doing it this way to make the transition, whether it's a color change or if it's going to be a different material change as I start to co coil it around, I find it just looks a little bit more smooth. I thought I would try the jet black cording as well. All of the supplies that I've used for both of these plate designs will be in the description box below. The cream and the black cording is the exact same size, but I thought the contrast would look really wild. Now I'm going to add in just the seagrass, and seagrass can actually come in a few different colors, but I'm going to match it up to the original cording and I'm just going to keep coiling that around. Again, really important to make sure you're using enough of the glue and very, very small amounts so that way it doesn't leak in between the coil. The fun part about this is you can create it any which way you want. You can add and take away whenever you want. You can create a really busy design or a very simple design. No particular pattern, I'm just kind of going with what I see. I absolutely love this Antibes Green. This is the chalk paint in Annie Sloan chalk paint. I did this probably about three years ago and it was in a spare room, but I think I'm gonna go with a whole different kind of design and look for this table and chair just because I'd like to repurpose it for my own use. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fix this tabletop, which has been, as you can see, quite abused. Just using an orbital sander, I'm gonna take off all of this stain and varnish on the top, and I wanna smooth it down to the raw wood. So I'm gonna use a 60 grit to start, then I'm gonna move that to a 120 grit to help smooth it out, and then to make it really buttery smooth, I'm going to finish it in a 220 grit. I absolutely love sanding, it's very satisfying. But as you can see, we got it down to the nice raw wood. For the actual frame of the desk, as well as the chair, I'm gonna start with the Annie Sloan chalk paint in a graphite wash. But my base color, I'd really like to use the French linen. And with French linen, I'm gonna put on two full coats and I want lots of texture on both the frame of the desk as well as the chair. So my first layer is gonna be really important just to put it on nice and smooth. I don't want any of the edges and corners of the chair to get clumpy or the paint to run down. I find using the flat chip palm brush, it's a very thin brush, really helpful to get into the back spokes. This is a very squared, kind of one of those writer desk chairs. So I definitely want to really amplify its original nostalgic look as well as give it kind of a little bit of a textured look when we get into the paint wash of it and i'll show you that in just a moment what i love about chalk paint is it is super thick and what i really want to do is create lots of texture so lots of random brush strokes so really important that we probably just let these two coats dry overnight so that way everything is fully cured and ready for the next steps i'm going to go and finish the bottom base again two coats of French linen and making sure lots of strokes every which way because we want to create as much depth in order to do the decorative finish I want to do next. Again, I'm going to let these both dry overnight before we get into the next step. First thing I'm going to do is take that graphite chalk paint. It's black, but it's also a dark gray, so it's not 100% deep, rich black. I've made a paint wash, 50% paint, 50% water. Now, what I wanna do is take shop towels that are already moist, and I'm gonna do what I call a little bit of a ragging technique. We want that paint wash to sit into the low points of the already created textures we've done with the two layers of the French linen. 
I also really find it helpful to use a moist rag. I'm just using the shop towels. The reason is, is because I don't want the paint wash to actually come off or be soaked up. What I want it to do is actually create more dimension and texture as well as a design. So by moving this moist rag around, I'm creating even more texture on top of allowing the paint wash to sit inside those low points. I like to use the side of the cup to help wring out some of the excess paint wash out of the brush. This way the paint wash will go on, but it also won't run. I don't want it to have run lines in the actual finish. I found by using just the one rag, I was allowed to complete my lower portion of the desk. I made a new rag for the chair, and I'm also going to do the little underneath drawer. And it's fully exposed underneath this desk, so I'm going to paint that as well to mirror the bottom portion of the desk as well as the chair. The only problem with the drawer is it has hardware that's completely anchored and it's got this rather large wire completely inside the drawer frame. So I can't take it off and if I do, I run the risk of splitting the wood. And I think I'm just going to be safe and I'm going to do another little trick that you can do if you can't remove your hardware so we can actually go back to a metal look and not so much a painted look. So this is what it's going to look like as the paint wash is going to dry. And now that I have all of my pieces done for the desk as well as the chair and the drawer, I'm going to let this dry overnight. So right now what you're seeing is the wet look and this is actually going to become more opaque. Now for that drawer handle hardware, I'm just going to add this dark silver on top of it and that's going to just brighten it a little bit and give it more of a metal look again. So here are one of those random items I spoke of. You're not even sure what you can do with it or even if you can salvage it. It's pretty broken down. It's got a lot of marks and dings and a lot of scratches on this piece. So I added eight inch hairpin legs and those will be in my description box below and they're really easy. They just screw onto the bottom and this is going to lift the whole bench up. Now I'm thinking to do something textured, but an easy texture, and this is going to help mask all of those imperfections that's on this thin wood. So I'm going to use the graphite chalk paint as well as some salt wash. If you don't have salt wash or can't access the salt wash, you could always use baking powder to create a little bit of that texture. Now because of what I want to add to this piece, just to give it some more design, I don't want to mix my salt wash and paint. I'm actually going to do it separately. Now because I'm working off a piece of plastic, I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of my salt wash down and dip into it where I want to put a little added texture where the bench has a lot of wear. And again, I'm just trying to mask out a lot of its imperfections by going with such a dark color and adding in that little bit of texture. But there are a few spots I don't want the added texture because of what I want to do with my next step. This is also a great way, if you're not familiar with adding textures to your paint, to play with it. And this way you can have a little bit of control on where you want your texture and how much. Sometimes it's, you know, a hit and miss with how much we add together to mix it. So this way you can just kind of add it as you go. But I did want a few spots on here that were just of the chalk paint because the next step I want to do is add in some transfers. And I have these IOD Iron Orchid Designs Lemon Transfers. And it's a transfer that's all set and all we're going to do is cut out what we want and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to create your own design. What's great about this is it's already on the transfer sheet. So you're just going to pick out 
what part of the transfer you want and you can cut these in any way you want if you just want a little bit of the design if you want to use the whole sheet the fun part about these is you can actually overlap them as well and it looks really organic and it looks a little bit more like it was painted in and I'm going to show you another trick we're going to do with the chalk paint to give it a little bit more dimension and look a little bit more painted in Again, I'll have this transfer in my description box below. I really love this design as it's very organic and it's a great way just to add some nice pop, whether it's to an old picture you want to kind of upcycle, something you want to put into your kitchen. This is a very universal look and it's just very bright and cheery. So you're going to use a little transfer stick. Once you've placed your piece of transfer on your piece and you're actually just going to rub the transfer right onto where you want it. And this is where you're going to play with the little cuts and that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going back to my paintbrush and I'm just going to do a little bit of stippling on top of the transfer and kind of rub into creating these low lights so it looks like it was blended into the paint. And again, just trying to make it look more like it was painted in and it's not a transfer. Because the transfer is so thin, you can't even see any lip to it. So I wanted to place the lemon vines to kind of go into a certain direction based on how I was placing it on this piece. So the nice part is, is you can cut them the way you want it. So you can kind of make the direction in which you want the lemons and the lemon vines to drop. The nice thing is too, is you can actually go around a corner, which I'm about to do with this particular piece of the transfer. And I love the look as it gives it even more dimension to your pieces. These are great just for those one-off projects you want to do, something in particular that matches for a certain project look that you want. And the rub on transfer and transfer to stick is so easy to use. To seal your chalk paint project, you're just going to use it like a moisturizer is the clear wax and this will also seal your transfer as well. I always come across these Singer sewing machines. They seem to be popping up everywhere where I live and it's... You know, one of these random items, do you want to keep it? Are you even going to use the sewing actual machine inside? But some of them are just so unique and the, I just love the fact if we could do something to repurpose with them. This particular machine is actually in mint condition, so I want to leave that alone. As for the wood case that it's sitting in, it's in pretty rough condition, so I'm going to have to work with those imperfections. Again, I'm going to go with that dark, really kind of a black dark gray chalk paint in the graphite. We want to create lots of random brush strokes and this way it's going to mask out those little imperfections and you're going to kind of work it into the design. Using the flat matte chalk paint style paints, whether you're going to use one from a different company, what I find it does with these knocks and imperfections and gouges in the wood is it masks it out. It doesn't even look like it's there when you look at it once it's completely painted. So I'm going to let this dry 100% first. Then I want to add a stencil for the top piece and kind of work this into the design of the Singer sewing machine. So I'm just going to use a foam roller and what I want it to do is I want to have kind of thick points with the paint and thin points so it will have a little bit of a worn look. And if it's still a little too white, I'm using the Annie Salone Pure White just for the stencil part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stipple a little bit of that graphite chalk paint on top of the stencil so it has a little bit more of a worn look to it but very very light so I didn't add any more paint to my brush I'm just using what's left on the paintbrush itself and I'm just going to hit the very tips of the bristles all the way around the stencil for the little decal in the front I'm just going to rub on a little bit of that white chalk paint and anything that the roller is hitting just at the corners, I'm going to grab the graphite and correct that. And I'm even thinking maybe to use a little bit more of that dark silver gilding wax. And I think this is really going to help out the actual Singer sewing machine sign on the bottom where it's actually cast iron. And that's going to help the actual sign pop right out. And to apply it, 
just like the hardware I did with the desk. Just put it on your finger, small, tiny amounts, and you're just gonna rub it on. It's really easy to apply. Because these are original old machines, and this was the original company name, it's kind of nice to put the accent of highlighting um, all of that signature detail back up. So using the gilding wax is fantastic, and it comes in copper and gold as well. For the chalk paint to seal, and if you're going to use this as a tabletop, I recommend just using the clear wax with a lint-free cloth, just like a moisturizer. Thank you so much for watching today's video and please let me know if you have any questions and or comments. Leave me a comment in the comment box below. All the supplies in which I've used will also be found in the description box below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. It's going to tell you when I upload my next video. I'm so excited to share more DIYs, furniture transformations and room makeovers. So until then, take care and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon.